Hi everybody, thanks for watching another video. I've, uh, I've had a few questions in uh, some of the videos asking why we immigrated from the Netherlands to Canada and then from Canada to the United States. So I thought I would uh, talk about some of those reasons in this video and maybe give you a little bit more of a history of our farm in the Netherlands to kind of give you a better idea of why we moved from the Netherlands. So I'm in our uh, uh, break room at the dairy here. This is where the guys eat. We have a couple pictures hanging up here of our farm in the Netherlands. So that this was uh, so this would have been the the original building. There was the living quarters on the far side of of the building, and where this tractor is uh, sitting in that door there. That was a shop, but it would have originally been where the cows would have been, and probably some other farm animals also at that at that time originally. Uh, a little bit of history about our farm. So my uh, great grandpa Van Bedaf originally started renting this farm. Uh, don't exactly know when that was, but the, that's how he started out was uh, renting this farm. Uh, then when my grandpa Van Bedaf, whose name is also Pete, uh, when he was around 20 years old, uh, my great-grandpa passed away, so my grandpa took over the farm at that time. Uh, and then I believe, uh, probably uh, five to ten years later, my grandpa got married with my grandma. Uh, right around the time that my dad was born, they were able to purchase this farm. Uh, and then I think around... 1979 1980 they built this barn on the right here with uh, free stalls and a parlor at that time and then this barn in the back uh, used to have pigs and that was converted to uh, hold their heifers uh, and then this this building right here in the front you can maybe see it a little bit better here this this building right here in the front would have had some of the horses in it and was used for storage and you can see here this is the would have been the freestyle barn half of this was added on later but in yeah around 1980 I think 1979 they built this original part they built this original part here with freestalls and a parlor uh, they they would have kept some of their horses in this building and my grandpa never really uh, drove tractors. They, they didn't have a tractor until my dad was around 16 years old, I think. So he always used horses to do the field work. Uh, they, I think they had around uh, 50 or 60 acres of land around the farm there that they would have used. Uh, a lot of it was pasture land. And then they also raised, uh, I think they, they raised corn silage in the Netherlands. I would have to check on that. But I think they did, uh, and it was the majority of that was right around the farm there. Uh, then uh, my mom and dad uh, were wanting to stay in dairy farming, and I think they wanted to give us kids the opportunity to be dairy farmers. And the area that we were we were from in the Netherlands, there's uh, a lot of competition for land, and not a lot of land available. Uh, a lot of housing, uh, industrial, uh, a lot of competition from other types of farming, uh, strawberries, a lot of vegetables grown in our area, a lot of greenhouses put up in that area of the Netherlands. So there's a lot of uh, competition for land. And then on top of that, a lot of government regulations and uh, the government is trying to preserve a lot of uh, land and actually take a lot of land and put it back into nature reserves and stuff like that. So my, my mom and dad thought it, uh, maybe they could be dairy farmers for the rest of their life, but there probably wouldn't be a good opportunity for us kids to take over the farm and be there long term. So um, at that time, a lot of uh, farmers in the Netherlands were immigrating to Canada, the United States. and. Uh, they were started looking in the United States um, at that time they thought that uh, the jump was going to be too big to go from 60 cows in the Netherlands to 
milking uh, 500 plus cows in the US because that was really how many cows they needed to milk to meet some of the stipulations to get a visa uh, in the United States. So then they started looking in Canada, uh, decided to go that route in 2001, I believe. So we, we moved to Canada in 2001 uh, sold the farm in the Netherlands, and I, there actually are still some cows milked there. Not not as many as there were when we were there, but there are still some milking cows on the farm there. Then we moved to Canada in 2001. This was our farm in Canada. It was, uh, when we arrived there was just a field. Uh, everything was uh, built at that point. So this would have been the, the milking parlor, plus uh, I think ca some calves on this side, plus equipment room, storage, and then the, the barn where the cows were, plus some of our younger calves were in this barn. Uh, shop on the right side here, feed, storage in the back. So in Canada we were milking around 110 cows, uh, about double from what we were milking in the Netherlands. So uh, milk cows in Canada for about eight years. Uh, had some questions about the quota system. So in in the Netherlands at, at the time that we left there was a quota system and uh, in Canada there was also and there still is today. So basically what that means is uh, you have to buy quota in, in order to deliver milk. So you would buy say uh, for 100 liters worth of quota to be able to deliver 100 liters worth of milk. Uh, and uh, they, they call that supply management system, so the, the government is trying to uh, prevent overproduction of milk, basically, uh, instead of a free market system like it is here in the United States. And there's a lot of uh, benefits and there's uh, some disadvantages also. Uh, some of the benefits are that the, the price is always a lot more steady, there's uh, less ups and downs. We're here, we're in a free market system. If uh, we, we can see a lot of fluctuation in milk prices and a lot of volatility. We're in uh, Canada, the, the price is a lot more stable and the price for milk is actually higher, but you have to remember that you're also paying for that quota. Uh, so that's, you have to really consider that that's coming out of your, your milk check as well, especially if you're uh, a brand new farm like we were back then. Somebody had asked if uh, if I see any uh, benefits or disadvantages to a quota system over a free market system like we have here in the United States. Uh, maybe there's uh, maybe there's some, but really you're still trying to do the best job that you can, trying to be as efficient as possible, uh, trying to care for your cows as best as possible, and in the end you want to be in that the top percentage of farms, whether you're in Canada, in the Netherlands, or in the United States. Uh, we, we went to the United States in 2008, uh, mainly because my mom and dad thought their, the farm in Canada was not big enough to support multiple families. Uh, and it's difficult to grow your farm because you have to buy quota. Quota is pretty expensive. And then you have a lot of, uh, money invested into something that's really nothing but a piece of paper that says you have so much quota. And if the, the government ever decided to do away with the quota system, that's gone, which they did in the Netherlands. Uh, it's probably been 10 years already. In Europe, they, in all of Europe, they had a quota system and they went away with that system. So then whatever quota you would have bought is now worthless, basically. So. Um, at that time then they decided to start looking in the United States again um, and I've kind of talked about that in uh, one of their first videos I think maybe it would have been the fourth video so if you want to uh, listen or watch that then I, I kind of explain it a little bit more about how we ended up in Carrington but that was uh, yeah the some of the reasons that we left the Netherlands and then again left Canada uh, if we would have stayed in Canada, I'm sure that we would have made it work and we'd still be there uh, milking cows. My aunt and uncle are actually uh, moved to Canada together with us. 
they're still there and they have a very successful farm. They've done a lot of expanding over the last 10 years since we moved from Canada to the United States. So I think it's, it's more about making it work where you are, whether that's with a quota system in Canada or here with a free market system. Uh, I'm glad that we came here and uh, things are going well for us here, so I don't have any regrets about that, I guess. I also had some questions about uh, the process as far as uh, immigration goes. So we, I don't remember how it went going from the Netherlands to Canada because I was pretty young, but I would imagine it's somewhat similar to how we went from Canada to the US, which is uh, my dad applied for a visa, an investor's visa. He, he, yeah, he had to invest a certain amount of money in the US to get this visa. He could bring his family. Uh, so then we, we started the farm and then to uh, keep that visa or to apply for permanent residency you had to prove that you were, uh, you had an investment in the US, you had a business that you started and there were some uh, stipulations that you had to meet uh, that were requirements of uh, applying for a permanent residency through that visa. So. Getting the visa I don't think was that difficult, uh, getting the permanent residency was a little bit more difficult. So we, we started on that basically as soon as, we, uh, as soon as we moved here. So we had a visa, it's good for five years I believe, it was an E2 visa if I remember right. That visa can be renewed pretty much indefinitely. We applied for permanent residency, uh, I think we... We got that in 2012 on a temporary status permanent residency and then uh, they do a lot of looking into your business, uh, making sure that you're meeting the requirements that are set out for you to be able to get a permanent resident, uh, get permanent residency through your business and through the way that you immigrated to the United States. So went through that, um, 2013, I think we were, the temporary status was removed. So now we were permanent residents in the United States. Uh, my mom and dad, brother and sister, they're still permanent residents today and that, I, I think that's for 10 years and it can be renewed uh, pretty much indefinitely after every 10 years. And I applied for uh, citizenship in 2018. I think I started that process. Uh, that uh, took about two years. And then December 2020, I had my naturalization ceremony. Uh, so I became a naturalized US citizen in 2020, the end of 2020. Uh, so for us, or for me, I guess, the the journey from moving here to becoming a U.S. citizen was about uh, a 12-year journey, I guess. It's, it's quite a process. Uh, getting permanent residency was probably the most difficult. We did have a, an immigration lawyer help us with that process. But I did the, the application to become a U.S. citizen myself, and uh, that wasn't too difficult. It just takes a lot of time. Uh, you have to fill out your application, you have an interview, and then uh, the, the officer that interviews you decides if you are uh, fit to become a U.S. citizen, I guess. Uh, you have a test to take that you have to pass. I wanted to talk about some of those things there today. Uh, if you have any questions about any of that or if you'd like me to further explain something, if you're more interested to know some things about our farms in the Netherlands or in Canada, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, I think I'll probably end this video here. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll uh, see you in the next video.